Hi students, so today I am going to give the introduction to the nanomaterials. Not only the introduction to the nanomaterials, I am going to discuss some critical points related to the nanomaterials. Now, in order to understand the nanomaterials, first and foremost, uh, we have to understand what exactly is the nano means. So, I will discuss what is nano first. Nano. Nano. Right? So, nano itself means the dwarf in the Greek. Itself means the dwarf in the Greek. Dwarf means very, very short. Very, very short. So, that is nano. Now, let us see what is the value of this nano. The value of this nano is 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. And this particular value is very, very trifling value. 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. It is a trifling value. So, though it is a trifling value, it can be considered as magical value or the magical point as the bulk properties of the materials such as MOECT that is mechanical, optical, electrical, catalytic and thermal properties will change us abruptly with the entry into this domain. Changes abruptly with the entry into in this domain. Into in this domain. Right. Now, do remember that uh, all the microstructure materials, all the microstructure materials except the nanomaterials, all the microstructure materials properties are same as the bulk material properties. That is the properties associated with uh, the micro materials is almost similar to the properties associated with the bulk materials. But this is not the case with the nanomaterials. That is, the properties associated with the nanomaterials is totally different from the properties associated with the bulk material students. Bulk materials. Now, what could be the reason? I will discuss later. On. In order to exemplify, in order to exemplify, in order to exemplify. Actually, the copper in the bulk scale, whenever the copper is the bulk material, then it is, copper is the bulk material, then it is uh, opaque. Bulk material, then it is opaque. But whenever the same copper is converted to the nanomaterial, that is converted to the nano scale, then it becomes transparent. Then it becomes transparent. It becomes transparent. This is one of the examples. And the second example is the stable aluminium. The stable aluminium. Whenever it is in the bulk state, the stable aluminium is stable. Aluminium is stable whenever it is the bulk material or in the bulk state. But whenever the same aluminium is brought to the nano scale, it becomes aluminium nanomaterial. Now it turns to combustible. It turns to combustible. It gets the combustion nature. Combustion nature. On the other hand, for example, another example. This is the first, second, third example. So basically the gold, the gold in the bulk scale, whenever the gold is bulk material, whenever the gold is bulk material, then it is insoluble. It is insoluble. It is insoluble. But whenever the same bulk gold material is brought to the nano scale, is brought to the nano scale, then it becomes soluble then it becomes soluble. Another example is the same gold whenever it is in the bulk scale, that is whenever it is the bulk material, then it is, 
it will not act as a catalyst it will not act as a catalyst it will not act as a catalyst but whenever it is brought to nanoscale that is whenever the bulk gold material is converted to the gold nano material then it becomes the potential catalyst it becomes the potential catalyst potential catalyst right now what is the reason why whenever we are converting the bulk scale particle or materials to nano scale particles or nano scale materials why the properties are changing we have to know the reason right why the copper whenever it is in whenever it is the bulk material it is opaque and whenever it is converted to the nano material why it is transparent becoming transparent we have to know why when the aluminium as the bulk material is stable and when the same aluminium is brought to the nano scale that is whenever the same aluminium bulk aluminium is converted to the nano scale aluminium it is uh, turning combustible what is the reason the gold actually it is insoluble but whenever it is converted to the nano material that is whenever it is uh, brought to the nano scale why it is getting soluble why the gold uh, as the bulk material is not acting as a catalyst and whenever it is brought to the nano scale why it is acting as a potential catalyst right so there is a difference there is a difference between the properties of the bulk materials and the nano materials and this properties this unique properties of the nano materials nano materials have the wide application in modern era unique properties. and what are the unique properties associated with uh, these nano materials why the nano materials are behaving differently as the bulk materials because of the two main reasons the one reason is whenever the bulk material is converted to the nano material that is bulk scale is converted to the nano scale there is a increase in surface to volume ratio there is a increase in surface to volume ratio and not only that the quantum effect comes into picture quantum effect comes into picture whenever the bulk materials are converted to the nano materials now these are the two important properties associated with the nano materials by which the nano materials are having the wide applications in the modern era when compared to the bulk materials now what are these properties and how these properties will vary the vary the nano materials from the bulk materials i will discuss while discussing the properties of the nano materials in detail in in detail but do remember that due to these two reasons this due to these two factors that is surface to volume ratio and the quantum effect the nano materials behaves differently as the bulk materials keep this in the mind right now we have to discuss now we have discussed about what is nano exactly so with the help of the stuff which i have explained to you now let us discuss what exactly are the nano materials so don't be under the impression that the materials which are nano in size are called nano materials this is wrong this is false so do remember that the materials having structural components with at least one of the dimension in the 100 nanometers at least one of the dimension in the 100 nanometers are called as nano materials at least one of the dimension not the total substance at least one of the dimension is uh, 
less than the 100 nanometers then the materials are called as nanomaterials students right i hope you understood the nanomaterials one of the dimension now let us see what is nano science nano science nano science is a study of fundamental relationship between properties fundamental relationship between the properties and the material dimension in nanometer scale is called nano science right properties and material dimension in nanometer scale is called nano science right now what is nanotechnology nano technology nanotechnology the application of nanostructures is called nanotechnology the applications of nanostructures is called nanotechnology so dear students so these are the basic things with these are the basic as aspects in order to understand the nano materials uh, so precisely i will explain what is a nano right and what is uh, uh, what is the magical value of uh, the nano how it is uh, altering the bulk properties and how the nano materials are behaving unique when compared to the bulk materials and uh, what are the nano materials and what is nano science and what is nanotechnology explain that very clearly and uh, in the next video i am going to discuss about the classification of the nano materials followed by the properties of nano materials i hope you understood uh, this nano materials